Hello and welcome back to another Django tutorial. In this tutorial, we develop a simple Django REST API and then integrate React in a new Django app, building a simple front end to consume the Django API. This project is for reference. I don't go through every line of code, but I give you a high level overview of the project so that you can implement and explore further. You will need Node.js installed and Python, of course. Check out my other tutorials if you need any support with that. It's worth noting that there are many ways to develop with React and Django, all which can be situational. So once we built a simple REST API with Django, we will go through the initial steps to consume the RESTful API with React. So here we are again in PyCharm. We're going to create a new project and that's going to be a Django project. And we're going to name that Django API React. And this is going to be a new virtual environment. So now we're ready to start the project. So part one is going to be really simple. We're going to build a simple REST API. So we're going to install the Django REST framework, build a new model, uh, configure the URLs, and then also then configure the serializers. Okay, so let's start with building a simple app. We're going to build an app called Events. So once that app is created, we can then now go into the Events app and now we need to configure the model. So nothing crazy here. You can see that we've just basically imported models at the top here and then we created a new model. We've called this Events. And here we just can have title and details. So this is events as in wedding events and so on. So go ahead and make migrations and then just uh, do a migrate to commit that database. And then go ahead and select the events folder. And we need to now make a new file. We're going to call that serializers.py. Developing a serializer allows our data from the database to then be serialized into, for example, JSON, and then it can be consumed by others through our RESTful API. So first of all, we want to just import from the REST framework serializers. Now you notice that this is in red because we haven't actually imported or installed the REST uh, framework yet. So we'll do that in a second. And now we need to import from models, the model events. So that's what we've just developed in models events. And now we utilize a new class, this I call lead serializer. So we need the information or we need to utilize the tools within the rest framework serializers to then serialize some data. We define that through class meta. So here then I define the model which is events, we know that. And then the data in the model is title and details. So therefore, these are the fields that I want to collect and serialize. So before we forget, we just need to install the Django REST framework. So we go head over to the terminal again, and I will just install that. So you need to utilize pip install Django to Django REST framework in the notes there. Okay, so with that installed, um, we just now head over to the settings of the main app and we'll just configure that um, with our new apps. So first of all, first off, we need to define the events app. That's our first app we built. And also we need to incorporate the Django REST framework. So that's the REST underscore framework. So that's what we need to register in the settings file. Okay, so all that's left now is to head over to the views. We need to create a new view and then configure the URLs. So we're just keeping it simple here in the view, utilizing the list create API view, which is a generic 
API view, hence we're importing generics. You can see here that we're using the events model and we're collecting all the information from that model. So this is all we're gonna need for this example. Um, it is gonna allow us to get and post information. So that just leaves the URLs. So we go over to the main app here, API React, and we'll just configure this first. Won't need that. So we're just gonna need include, and then we'll create a new URL pattern to connect to our new app events. So we have path include and then events.urls. So now I make a new file in the events app called urls.py and then I create this new, this new URL pattern. So obviously I've imported the path and the views and then the path here is gonna be event slash API and then obviously I hook that up to the view that we've just created. So now we should be able to go to the web page and access that at event slash API and here we have it so we can Type in a new event. We should be able to post some information. And if I now refresh, yep, so we can see the information now that's available. If yours didn't work, then by all means, uh, make sure that you've created a migration and you've migrated your database. So next up is to install and get React working. So let's now build a new app and we're gonna put React within the app, which is obviously gonna be within our project. So that's where React is going to reside in, reside in a new app that we're gonna build. So we're gonna build this new app called React underscore front end. So we do that first. So now we have a new project folder, there we go. And now we need to build a folder structure within this. So this is the folder structure that we're looking for to build. Um, so you can see that we've got three folders inside the, the new app, SRC static and templates, and you can see then the folders that we need within that. So go ahead and develop this structure within the new app that we just built. Okay, so now the folders are in place. I can now just go into the new app and then we can initialize the environment using npm init with the y switch. So now that's initialized, so we should have a new file appear in any second. So now we have the package JSON file. So we need to go into here and we're just going to build a little bit of automation by adding a script underneath here in the scripts. So you can see in the example in the notes there, um, what it's going to do, it's gonna develop um, some, it's gonna automate, automate a task for us so that we can run the system. Okay, so now we're going to install Webpack So we'll let that install. And then we'll go ahead and install Babel. And then finally, we will then pull in React. Okay, so with that in place, we're just still inside of the React front end app. We're gonna create a new file uh, for Babel, and that's going to be a, a dot B A B L E L R C, and then inside of there, uh, there's a little bit of script there. And there we have it. So that's all now set up. And actually, one more thing to do: we just need to create a webpack.config.js file. So we go back into and create a new file. So that's webpack.config.js. This is going to be allowing us to configure the, uh, it's for configuring the Babel loader. So 
create a new file and what we're going to need in there is some model exports there we go okay so that's um babel now set up and configured so now we have some of that configuration out of the way let's head back now into django so we're going to need to create a simple view um, which is going to send the user to a html page so that we can see the information so here we've just gone into the view on the react front end app and we're importing render and we're just going to request the index.html file so from here um, we're going to go into the templates and just make a new template and we're going to call this index.html just to match that up okay so here we can just add some really simple html so within the html file we set the the standard html template boilerplate and we've loaded static and we're creating a new element here with the ID of API. That's where the React will load the data. And then we're just connecting to the front end main.js file. This main.js file is obviously going to be the output file for, for all of this. Uh, if you go into the package again, you can see here we'd, we've developed this uh, script here whereby we're outputting the, in the front end the main.js. So that's going to be the last step of us generating this file. So next up, we now need to configure the URLs. So if we go back into the main app, we just need to tell the URLs that this app has URLs or just forward URLs to this app. So inside of here, we just need to add a new path. So the path that we're going to create um, is going to be the root directory. And obviously we're including the React front end URLs, which we now need to build. So once we've included that, we can now go into the front end and create a new URLs file. Now, if you remember, the view that we created earlier was just called indexed. So inside of the URLs, we're just going to create a simple path to that. Okay, so now we've got the heavy work and how we're going to create a, a file. Um, it will be a re React component that we're going to need to build for fetching and displaying information or the data from the API. So in the SRC inside the uh, React front end app, we've got components folder that we built earlier. So inside of here, we're going to build a file and we're going to call that app.js. So inside of here then. So within this script, there are three components. First of all, we create a state, which is simply an object that holds the data pending for it to be rendered. So once you created the state, we then need to fetch the data. So here we're using component did mount and you can see where we're getting the data from. In this case, it's event slash API. And then finally, we just return the data. So here we're returning the title and the details. Okay, so with that in place, there's a few more things that we need to do. So first of all, we need to register this app. We've not done that yet. So if you head over into the settings file, we then need to register the app inside the installed apps. And then just having a look at the code, I found an error. So if you go into the URLs, no, the, the URLs, I think it was, no, the views. Inside of the view, um, I created an incorrect name here. Um, I used the name of the app, but it's the folder that I'm looking for. So I changed this to front end. This front end here uh, correlates to in the templates. So this is going to look for the templates folder front end and then the index file. 
So we're going to need to make a entry point for Webpack. That's going to be in our React front end components and then, sorry, the SRC, sorry, folder, and then index.js. So in here, we simply just reference the app that we just, the file we just created. So import from app, <coughs> sorry, import app from, and then components app. So that's this file here that we just created. So that builds a link to that file. And now we just need to run. So if we go over to the uh, terminal, make sure you're inside of the React front end app. Now we can run at npm run and then dev. So that's all working okay. So now we can just run the server. And then head over and we should, there we go. So there's our details being outputted. Obviously we can format if we want to, it's not very pretty, but if you remember, if we go into our um, API, so that was forward slash events API, you can see we've got two entries here. Uh, that's what's being displayed now on the home page. So that wraps up this introduction to some of the concepts of integrating React with Django RESTful API. This type of project does leave a lot of questions open. Um, there was a lot of things that I didn't explain in this project and we've moved through the code fairly quickly in this project. So hopefully this would just give you a basis, a base for you now to explore and to expand. You now have an application um, whereby you can extract information from the RESTful API. Of course, there's lots of other aspects to the Django API. Uh, we could now move on to authentication, for example. We could expand the React apps uh, and integrate that further within the RESTful API. Of course, there's lots of other steps now, but hopefully um, you can take on board some of these steps if you're new to developing with Django and of course React and integrating the two together.